Steps of total abdominal hysterectomy. First, patient is laid in supine position and urethral catheter is inserted for continuous bladder drainage. Keeping the bladder empty is very important for safe operation. The vaginal cavity is prepared by povidone iodine before starting surgery. It's important to know about the position of operators. The primary surgeon may stand either on left or on right side and the assistant stands in front of the primary operator. After cleaning and draping the patient, the operator incises the abdominal wall longitudinally from pubic toward the umbilicus, then fascia and peritoneum. It can also be performed by lower transverse pharyngeal incision. In fact, the midline and longitudinal incision is the gold standard for pelvic surgery to facilitate surgical procedure and to avoid injury to vital structures. But if the uterus is not very large, the transverse incision can be given. The intestines are softly pulled upward and maintained with a large gauze or sponges. An appropriate operative field is obtained by the self-retaining retractor. Before starting surgery, the operator should examine uterus, adnexa and surrounding organs and check whether unexpected abnormalities and or adherence exist or not. If adherence are present, restoration of the pelvic anatomy by the release of the adherence is mandatory for safer operation except in the surgery for malignancy where the cancer cells exist within the adherence. If needed, the acidic fluid is presented to the pathology lab for cytological examination. Throughout the surgical procedure, the uterus is always maintained in the appropriate traction by the assistant. A pair of long and straight cocker clamps are placed between the uterus and the adnexa. The tip of the clamp should be at a vascular and transparent space of anterior and posterior leaf of the broad ligaments and should not reach to the uterine vessels below. Since the gynecologic surgery is essentially the operation in the retroperitoneum, it is necessary for the operator to enter and explore the retroperitoneal cavity. To do so, the operator must identify the entrance most easily accessible and that is through the round ligament. Even in case of the distorted anatomy, round ligament can be identified easily. Therefore, hysterectomy usually begins with the round ligament. After cutting the round ligament, air will enter the retroperitoneal cavity. The loose connective tissue fall down and the cavity can be seen. After clamping, cutting and ligating the round ligament, next is the turn of infundibulopelvic ligament or utero-ovarian ligament. So by clamping, cutting and ligating these ligaments, a window is made through the broad ligament by a finger passing from behind. Then a large tissue forcep clamp that is zeppelin clamp is passed medial or lateral to the ovaries. That depends upon whether we are doing the bilateral serpingo ophorectomy or not. It's important to identify the ureter and if ovaries are to be left, it's a good practice to remove the whole tubes. While retracting the uterus upward, the surgeon opens the anterior leaf of the broad ligament to the vesicouterine fold. The vesicoperitoneal fold is elevated and fine filmy attachment of the bladder to pubovesical fascia are visible. The bladder can be dissected of the lower uterine segment of the uterus and cervix by either blunt or short dissection. Next comes the uterine artery. So clamp cut and ligate the uterine artery. For that, Place the hysterectomy clamp at right angles at the midpoint of the uterus, cut medially and ligate. Repeat the same procedure on the other side. It's important to know that surgeon must identify the ureter before clamping. The uterus is held in traction in upward position and the handle of the knife is used to dissect the pubovesical cervical fascia inferiorly. This step mobilizes the ureter laterally and caudally. Next come the cardinal and uterosacral ligaments. 
clamp and cut and ligate the paracervical tissue that are cardinals place a hysterectomy clamp medial to the uterine artery pedicle along the paracervical tissue reaching but not including the vaginal angles incise medially with the knife and ligate and repeat the same procedure on the other side the uterosacral ligament may be clamped cut and ligated in a similar way if they restrict the uterine mobility the posterior leaf of the broad ligament is incised down to the uterosacral ligament and across the posterior lower uterine segment between the rectum and the cervix the uterus is placed on traction in upward direction and the lower uterine segment and the upper vagina are palpated between the thumb and first finger of the surgeon hand to ensure that the ligaments have been completely incised the vagina is entered by step wound with a scalpel and is cut across either a, with a scalpel or scissor and the uterus is removed so to remove the uterus and cervix open the anterior fornix with a knife extend the incision to posterior fornix and remove the uterus after that ligate the pedicles the vault suture continuous or locked or interrupted or leave the leave it open but angles must be secured approximate the paracervical plus minus uterosacral pedicles to reduce the risk of prolapse here it's important to know about the techniques to prevent post hysterectomy wart prolapse at the time of hysterectomy which include suturing of the cardinal and uterosacral ligament mccall culturoplasty and sacrospinous fixation in the end we close the abdomen the retroperitoneal space is washed by the normal saline hemostasis is ensured and the abdomen is closed in reverse manner subscribe on ops and gynae and write in the comment section of this video follow our facebook page of on ops and gynae thank you so much allah hafiz